What is up, guys? It's your boy at DFS Jimmy bringing you another early week course preview, course breakdown from our friends over at FanshareSports.com. That's right, uh, FanshareSports.com. Uh, this week we are at TPC Potomac for the Quicken Loans National. Uh, before we get into that, uh, pretty tough golf course, by the way, but before we get into that, I do want to take you all through a little bit of Fanshare, kind of talk about what they do. This can be real quick, so don't click off, make sure you pay attention, and we'll get right into the course here in a second. So, first of all, FanshareSports.com, these guys are doing a ton of work every single week, not just for PGA, they're making big moves in the NFL this year, they got a lot of cool stuff planned for NFL, so if you play NFL at all, make sure you get over there and get signed up early uh, before the season this year, they have a lot of stuff planned for the NFL, but for you golfers out there, uh, these guys are, these guys listen to every single podcast every week, they read every article every week, there's no way you and I are doing that every week, right? These people aggregate all of the ownership, all of the sentiment from around the industry into one place. They, they distill it down for you, make it easy to consume and easy to make decisions with. So first of all, the, my favorite place to go when I get over to Fanshare, I like to click on the form guide, B under, underscore B hacks to uh, on Twitter does a great job with his uh, form guide every single week, really concise, nothing too crazy, just Cuts made, top 25s, top 10s, last five events, event history, uh, event history the last four years, and then a few key stats. He keeps it really tight. Four stats, rolls it up for you. And then you get your ownership and your uh, or your DK price and your odds, right? Really clean, really simple. You can sort it by alphabet, uh, alphabetically. You can sort it by DraftKings dollars. You can sort it by key stats. Um, either way, really clean, easy to look at. Nice way to get a quick glance in as you're making lineup decisions early in the week. He usually gets this updated on Tuesdays, right? So you got plenty of time to make decisions with. The next place you should go or the pl next place I like to go when I'm on Fanshare is Fanshare Pro. There's two tabs that are that are maybe the most important. One is your standard landing landing uh, spot right here. Um, in the, in the Fanshare Pro tab uh, under Ownership Trends, it's every single week. you got a great export button. You can click here, hit 500. You can get all of them, whatever. Click this button, exports all of this tab for you, all of this page right into Excel. You can manipulate it, color code it, do whatever you want with it, right? But it's got your tags. It's got your movement over the last 24 hours. This is a great category to look at on Wednesdays, by the way. If you guys aren't looking at who's moved in the last 24 hours, uh, that is that is all the touts right there, right? This is all tout activity in the last 24 hours movement. This lets you see where the industry is really lining up in terms of chalk. Uh, you get over here, they got your DK dollars, your FanDuel dollars, their official World Golf ranking, and then most importantly, the projected ownership, the PO category right here, the PO uh, column. They project the ownership better than anybody else in the industry, guys. Not only do they take the historical ownership in their model, then they take all of the sentiment from everybody around the industry every single week, and they blend all that into their historical ownership, and what you come out with is the most accurate ownership projections in the industry. So, guys, again, if you're not over here checking out FanshareSports.com, you really need to. Uh, you're leaving money on the table if you're not utilizing this, especially in GPPs, uh, to find your to find your low owned, uh, high upside pivot plays. So, the historical DK performance and the and the projected DK points performance are the other two tabs that I really like. They do a great job of projecting DK points through historical performance, uh, as well as the projected ownership. I always run an optimal model or an optimal lineup based on their D projected DK points. It caches more times than it doesn't, guys. So, again, uh, if, you, if you're looking for a place to, to kind of dial all your information into one, one spot, you need a one-stop shop to make good decisions about your, your fantasy lineups, FanshareSports.com is the place to be. Make sure you get over there, sign up, get yourself a free account, take a look around. If you like what you see, sign up for the premium membership. You're not going to regret it. And, again, with the NFL season right around the corner, uh, you really should be on the front side of this, guys. They have a lot of big plans coming for NFL. So, again, FanshareSports.com. Now that we're done with all that, let's get into TPC Potomac and the Quicken Loans National. So, actually, before we uh, before we take a look at the card, let's take a look at the course. Uh, this is the 18th hole. Um, TPC Potomac is a par 70. It's a short course. Um, it sort of reminds me of uh, this is the second year we're playing at uh, TPC Potomac, right? After they had a major redo, the tour left them years ago because they. Quite frankly, the players hated it. Course was never in good condition. It had serious drainage problems. Uh, it was just it was a hot mess back when they were playing at this course. 
they took a few years off. They played uh, across the street at Congressional, and um, now they're back. They put a ton of money into this course. They revamped literally everything. It doesn't even look like the same golf course. Uh, we only have one year of, um, of sample data to operate off of, so... Um, I don't know how much I'm going to let, you know, kind of, kind of weigh on that, but uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's talk about the course in general a little bit and, and kind of what it feels like to me and, and kind of how it plays. It is a par 70, two par fives, four par fours, bunch of long or four par threes, bunch of long par fours on this golf course. Very similar to the type of golf we've seen in the last few weeks uh, on tour. Uh, this course was ranked in the top 10 most difficult last year when they played it. And I don't see that changing a ton this year. They may set it up a little bit easier, uh, but uh, guys, this is a this is a pretty tough golf course. Uh, par is a good score around here. I don't think um, I don't think you're gonna you're gonna see them set it up super easy. They've got uh, they've got a lot of long fescues here, some tight fairways, and and they deepened all the bunkers pretty significantly. Actually, they have kind of like a kind of like a Scottish feel to the bunkers. And you can kind of see them back here behind me. Um, pretty deep faces, uh, lots of big lips, lots of big edges. Um, and they're not, they're not like pristine, right? They've got, they've got some rough around them. And as you look through, and if you click through some other parts of the course, you'll see some of this rough over on the, like the far right. You'll see that type of rough, the really thick, long fescue uh, surrounding uh, some of these areas a little closer to the green. And, and especially on the fairway bunkers, close in and around the fairway bunkers, especially out on the outsides. So um, really, it is uh, it is a tough golf course that requires um, patience off of the tee and precision into the green. Uh, there are some tempting looks around here to kind of grab driver and just rip it, but it's not the play. You really do have to be positioned properly around this golf course, in my opinion. Being, uh, being outside of the first cut of rough is pretty penal around this golf course it tends to be kind of wet kind of sticky and you've got uh, you've got that long fescue and it, they, they graduate the rough uh, around the fairways and around the greens you can kind of see that a little bit in this picture here you can see some of the mow lines you can see the graduated rough so you've got a little leeway off the sides of the fairways here uh, but really folks there's not a ton when you look at um, the guys that had success here last year in the, in the, the one event we've had uh, they all they all tended to be pretty good um, fairways gained guys, pretty straight and steady off of the tee. Kyle Stanley being the winner, uh, you know, just a just a monster straight tee to green game. Uh, always in position off the tee, always in position into the green, and just can't really putt. Uh, and that seemed to be the theme last year with all of the the top of the leaderboard was exceptional ball striking and sort of mediocre putting. Uh, I'll be interested to see if Potomac plays the same way or sort of re rewards the same skill set this year as it did last year. But uh, but long story short, guys, this is not going to be a birdie fest. This is going to be a grinded out golf course. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Players finding themselves off of the fairway, and they will do, they will, they'll find themselves off of the fairway plenty here. They're they're pretty difficult to hit, and they're fairly narrow. Lots of mature trees uh, around here, so. When guys are off of the fairway, uh, they are really going to struggle to get onto and hold these greens. They're 5,300 square feet total for the gorse, and that is pretty small for the tour. Um, so again, what it lacks in distance, uh, it certainly makes up for in precision around this golf course. Um, that said, there are some longer hitters that have done well or that did well last year, Keegan Bradley being one of them. Uh, again, just super straight off of the tee and an exceptional tee to green game and a questionable putter, Kyle Stanley, same thing. Uh, I suspect that's the type of game we're going to be looking for again this year at Potomac. Um, the course setup should not change a ton. I think the tour wants it to be a true test. Congressional wasn't a pushover either. Uh, for this tour stop, and I, I don't expect them to ease up this course any compared to last year. Last year, it played one and a half strokes over par, uh, and I think the tour is probably fine uh, with with that number. Um, to get into our card a little bit, uh, you see that we're we're only dealing with seventy one hundred yards. Nothing nothing too crazy, but what you uh, what you'll notice is you've got several drivable par fours, specifically the 14th being less than 300 yards. Um, and with the elevation change, uh, the, uh, the, 
It's not drivable, but it certainly is like a long drive and a chip with the 13. So 13 and 14 really are some of your best scoring holes and scoring opportunities around this track. A track that has six par fours over 450 yards that collectively make up almost the entire over par percentage of this golf course at 1.47 strokes. So basically what I'm going to be focused in on is long par four scoring exclusively this week. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pull in a little bit of 400 to 450. Uh, the par fives, one is super long. Nobody is getting there in two. And the other one is manageable, but I mean, as you can see, only 1.3% of people are making an Eagle here. And really for a par five at a 34% bogey rate, that's pretty low. So the par fives, I mean, while, while gettable and, and certainly, um, certainly have the opportunity to bogey, you can see that they, last year they played over par, which is pretty unusual for par fives on the tour. Um, the only group that played under par was the short par fours. You have three par fours that are under 400 yards and all very gettable in terms of making birdie and or eagle on them, especially the 14th. Uh, guys that get aggressive on the 14th can find themselves uh, picking up a stroke, a much needed stroke, into a really difficult stretch of holes to close out the round. So, uh, again, guys, it's not a uh, it's not a birdie fest. There are very few holes to score on out here. For the most part, guys are going to be looking to find fairways, find greens, and two putt uh, on these par fours is is going to be the way that I think this course plays out yet again this year. So um, don't uh, don't get too focused on distance. Uh, really don't even get too focused on driving accuracy. In my opinion, I think in terms of key stats that I'm going to be looking for this week, it is going to be par four scoring from 450 yards. It's going to be par four scoring from under 400 yards. I'm going to leave out the par four scoring for 400 to 450. I want to focus on where guys are going to lose strokes and where they're going to gain strokes. And I'm not going to factor in par three or par five scoring at all. I'm going to try and capture those in strokes gained approach when I weigh that a little bit. And then the rest of what I'm going to be looking for is um, fairways gained, greens and regulation gained, and probably a little. Well, I'm going to have some. I'm going to have some birdie or better in there because you need to. And I'm in, I'm also going to throw in a little bit of uh, bogey avoidance. Uh, like I said, par is a good score on this golf course. Uh, last year. Um, Again, small sample size, but I do think that it's indicative of how they're going to set it up again this year. But uh, for the most part, guys, we're looking at a pretty tough test, uh, one that falls right in line with where we have seen the guys playing the last three to four weeks. So um, I'm going to be looking at uh, recent form. I think recent form uh, is uh, indicative of success week in and week out, certainly when they've been playing a stretch of par 70s uh, like we have. I think the guys that have been hot the last two, three weeks, uh, this course should set up very nicely for them. Uh, and guys that haven't been playing well, I'm going to be looking for an exceptional tee to green game. Really clean tee to green game. Um, the rough is really penal here. I'm not concerned about putting at all. Uh, I want guys that are in the fairway and on the green. And if it takes them three to get down, that's fine. Really, I, I don't care about bad putters at all here. Uh, for me, it is going to be all ball striking uh, this week and uh, par four scoring. That is where I'm going to focus most of my energy and uh, probably base most of my lineup decisions around. So, Again, guys, make sure you get over to FansharesSports.com. Check those guys out. Make sure you get signed up for a free account. Check them out. Maybe you want to join Premium. Uh, I highly suggest that. I think it, I think it's an exceptional value. I think they have a great tool, and uh, they put out some ex they they put out awesome content every single week. So, make sure you get over there. Check those guys out. Make sure you give me a follow at DFS Jimmy on Twitter. Until next week, guys. Best of luck.